français que Substack parce que j'ai habité à Montréal pour cinq ans, mais juste un petit accent québécois, tabernac. <laughs> uh, seriously, my talk is called Dependencies, Static Analysis, and the Grid. And anybody who can recognize the photo behind me will know that I'm probably not talking about the Tron type of grid. I'm talking about the data center type of grid. Or again, if you can guess where this photo is from, I'm talking about the hacker's kind of grid? No. At this point, you're probably as confused as this small dog, as you should be. These are the purposes of my jokes. But this is a great question, right? The long story short is that earlier this year, I gave an academic study. And I recently finished my master's degree at Columbia University in the city of New York. And yes, we actually wrote a formal research paper and all of that. But if you've ever worked in academia, you'll know it's about as silly as a cat wearing a tie. <laughs> Because there are silly things like Likert scales and user studies and all sorts of that. And so, like any research study, we had to ask a question of a user base. And our particular user base was the Node community. And what we wanted to know was how do module authors answer questions about their community? So we took a unique set of individuals who happened to be some prolific module authors, and we asked them a routine set of questions about how they interacted with the people that use their module. And it turned out that the things that they did most frequently were the things that they found to be least effective. Or in other words, the most effective feedback mechanisms that they got were the ones that they used most infrequently. And these are things like having a large discussion on a GitHub issue or writing a very long blog post that you then get feedback from your community on or even writing a very long email to a mailing list. And the reason for this is because these are extremely time-intensive activities, right? You have to go out, you have to know what you're trying to ask your community. You don't get a chance to engage with the silent majority that might be out there using your module, doing something that you might not have even thought about yet. So how do we answer questions like this? By using NPM, of course. But I can't really talk about NPM without talking about the multi-dimensional graph that it happens to represent. So in order to talk about graphs, you have to know a thing or two about me. I happen to be from a city called New York. And there are some other folks that happen to be from New York. Yeah. <laughs> Enter the 36 chambers of the Wu-Tang Clan. So Wu-Tang was always about this. But the other thing that you need to know about me is that I'm also an engineer. And it turns out that there's something else that rules everything around me. And that would be graphs. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. So not this kind of graph, although these are extremely important. I'm talking about these types of graphs. And all of these graphs are different, of course, depending on what you know about graph theory. And What each one of these things means is not particularly important to my talk, but they are used for a huge variety of different things. But the thing that we actually care about is dependency management. So dependency graphs sounds a little bit complicated for this early in the morning. Turns out it's actually not all that complicated, but we do need to have some background in how we turn a package JSON file like this into its underlying graph representation. So given something like this, we have package A, which depends on package B and C, and it also has a dev dependency on D. We first have a node for A, and then we add a node for all of our dependencies. We then add a colored edge for where those dependencies are in the package JSON file. So you can see the white edges are dependencies, and the red edge is for your dev dependency. Pretty simple. But when you deal with a huge amount of packages, you actually end up with millions and millions of nodes and millions and millions of vertexes in your graph. The technical details of this were talks that I gave earlier this year 
which have videos online. There's some code that I talked about, which you can find online as well. But the purpose of this talk is to really say, what other questions can we ask from our graph? You probably ask these questions every day, but you don't know that you do it. So behind me is an example of one of those questions, which is NPM outdated. NPM outdated will tell me, in the context of the global graph right now, on the latest versions, based on the semantic things that I have in my package JSON dependencies, am I out of date and why? There are a bunch of other interesting pure graph questions that we can ask. When I say pure graph question, I'm talking about things that we can answer based just on the metadata itself. So people who depend on this module also depend on this other module. In the background, you can see the codependency relationship graph that we built as part of our research. Again, all of that is already open source online. We can ask questions like, is this module used more in production or in development? What is the most stable version of this module? Of course, stable here depends on our definition of stable, which I would choose to define as, what is the most depended on version of this module? Anyone who has used Python 3 might know what I'm talking about with regards to what is the most stable version of Python. So there are other types of questions that actually turn out to be way more interesting than these pure graph questions. But they require static analysis. And in these particular questions, we go out, we find out what packages we want to visit on the graph, and then we perform static analysis on each one of those nodes. So in the bottom here, you can see another piece of that research where we went out and we said, hey, let's count all of the usages for that module and then display it to the module authors. So this would be how often do other modules use a particular method? There are other extremely wide problems that this can solve, such as how many mon modules are vulnerable to the Shellshock vulnerability released earlier this year. This is somewhat complex to figure out, but something that could be done using static analysis. You simply check to see which environment variables passed to something like child process.exec and node happen to have unsanitized values attached to them. Another classic one is, can my module be updated to this version safely? Am I going to have some sort of breaking change? The problem with these types of questions is that they are incredibly compute intensive, which is to say, extremely slow. Uh, in the particular example that I gave before, running a standard analysis on a module like Winston, which happens to be a logging library that I wrote, took about an hour. And that is not acceptable for us as developers, because NPM outdated is really, really fast, which is why you can use it every day. Fast things get into your developer workflow, you go out, you use them, you want to use them again because they're easy. So how do we do this? By using NPM, along with a data pipeline. So it turns out that in order to do this analysis, we have a very standard set of things that we need to do. We need to get some set of vertexes from the dependency graph, download and untar those modules, turn those into an abstract syntax tree, and then perform some sort of arbitrary computation on them. And that, of course, are the things that stay the same. So given any set of modules, the analysis work changes, but the data pipeline stays the same, making it extremely parallelizable. So using something like Esprima or Recast, we can actually go out, get these things, get the NPM packages and download them. And if you notice from my slides before, this was actually one of the modules that I had in there. This particular module does just that. It will go out, get something for you, allow you to perform some sort of generic work on it, and then return it. So this is an extremely simple binary script that I wrote that uses it. It takes two command line arguments, the module itself and the work script that you want to be done, and outputs that to standard out. So you could say, spin up 100 machines, run this on it extremely quickly, and get things done. So this is a generic module to perform generic work to perform. Uh, 
Uh, it got the analysis time down from tens of minutes to tens of seconds. So really, the other thing that I want to ask you as the audience, as we sort of end up here, because I do have quite a bit of time, unfortunately, uh, is what other questions can you ask? And I'm just going to postulate here as we go back uh, a bit. So for example, if I wanted to calculate which methods are used, I would go out and say, OK, let's find all of the things that depend on this module. Go out, walk the graph, as we did here, download and untar those modules, get the AST, and print them out. So other things that we can do along these lines are that we can merge these two things together. There are a wide variety of questions that are out there that developers aren't asking today because it's too computationally intensive. So that's it. <laughs>